the blockchain cannot be described just as a revolution it is a tsunami like phenomenon slowly advancing and gradually enveloping everything along its way by the force of its progression hello everyone i apur maheshwari today's speaker of data r is here before you with an interactive online webinar on stable coin the backbone of cryptocurrency organized by analytics vidya what is a stable coin what is it used for what if there was a way you could buy a cryptocurrency that was basically cash meaning it didn't change value but it is still transferable and tradable as a cryptocurrency how was stable coins created and are they really a good idea will sticking around i will answer these questions and will cover the displayed topics these are what are stable coins uh, why stable coins are so important what kinds of stable coins are there what is the purpose of stable coin how does it work which is the best stable coin available so continuing with that uh, before moving further let me introduce myself uh, which will help you clear why you should listen to me uh, i am a, i am an upcoming software development engineer at ap mall of musk i am a multi platform application developer in android and ios a couple of my applications are also hosted on play store like kamu and vision i i have been recognized as a title holder by center of development of advanced computing cdec under indian ministry of electronics and information technology i won numerous national and international hackathons including smart india hackathon 2022 major league hacking hack the mountain 3.0 hack anova and anveshna 21 don't know whether this really helped you to focus on what i say but i will try my best to make this virtual session a worthy one why do we need stable coin what is the issue that persists in cryptocurrency that made stable coins come in most cryptocurrencies i pre assume that most of the attendees must have a clear idea about a cryptocurrency is right so most cryptocurrencies were meant to serve as a medium of exchange and not just to store a value the problem is that due to their relatively small market cap even popular cryptocurrencies like bitcoin tend to experience wide fluctuations i can uh, explain you this with a small example for example uh, i'm taking a participant who have attended right now Uh, let's say Asta is here. Uh, she is dropping a stone in a pond, and she is also dropping the same stone in an ocean. The effect of a stone on a pond will be larger than that of an ocean. In the same manner, the cryptocurrency market cap is a small pond for now, and is more affected by everyday buy and sell orders than, say, for example, the U.S. dollar. It's been changing every day, just a rise or a low. this creates a major issue since you can't enjoy the benefits of cryptocurrencies which include the decentralization of money and a free for all payment system without the value volatility that accompanies it imagine how hard it would be to use a bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency for a day to day transaction and trading purposes when one day the price of the bitcoin is x and the next day it's worth half of that just think of it for example taking another participant uh, we have simran in the meeting for example simran went to a domino shop and she want to buy a pizza for example she bought a particular pizza 8 years ago uh, with 10000 bitcoins and now if she goes to a shop to buy a particular pizza she would be done it with with around 0.001 bitcoin could you really imagine the prices that varies of a particular bitcoin so anyone in the uh, chat can uh, can estimate what is the amount of one bitcoin in indian currency do we have active participants uh, active participants in army anyone knows about 15 lakh 35 lakh yes uh, the it's around 14 lakh rupees one btc is equal to indian currency so it's how the things goes that exactly where stable coins come in 
which being the backbone of cryptocurrency. Simply putting in, stable coins are an attempt to create a cryptocurrency that isn't volatile. As your word suggests, stable. Stable coin means the values of particular coin being stable. Stable coin can act as a suit as a subtitle for a fiat currency of crypto investors, as these coins tend to mimic the nature of fiat money. Now you should know what fiat money is. A fiat money is like Indian rupees or US dollars. It is a type of currency that is declared legal tender by a government, but has no intrinsic or fixed value as the as one dollar varies with Indian currency. It goes around 80 rupees of Indian currency INR equal to one US dollars. So it usually being a variable and it's a tangible asset, just not as a gold or silver. And fiat currencies values are guaranteed by the government and uh, government that issues. For example, the Indian currency has been issued by the Indian government. The US uh, government has issued the USD and the government that can, can also control the supply of the money in circulation of the response as goes with the economic fluctuations. So stable coins helps in increasing the liquidity of crypto markets. The word liquidity means uh, that the flow and exchange of the of a particular Bitcoin in a market. For example, how easy it is uh, to transfer a particular coin or a particular rupees in a particular way. For example, it's very easy to convert our Indian rupees into US dollars or US dollars into Indian rupees and vice versa. So stable coins helps in increasing the liquidity of the crypto markets and are perfectly suited for any enterprise organization. For example, the stable coin known as Tether. Uh, or it is also known as USDT, the US dollar tether, is worth one US dollar and is expected to maintain this spec, means an amount or a rate which is fixed. Uh, for example, one tether is equals to one USD. Okay, so you have a basic understanding of what stablecoin is. Any doubts till now? Because I want to interact with you all, this won't be a monotonous session. Okay, cool. No doubts. Uh, well, moving ahead, technically speaking, a stable coin is a utility coin, a utility token, which is built upon another coin's blockchain. Now here the word comes in token. Is it similar to crypto coin? What actually token is? Uh, well, let's say you are wanting a new way to get around. For example, uh, we have an, another member in our meeting. Uh, for example, uh, the here is Samir. Samir do not have a four wheeler and want to go to a hill station. Now Samir has two options in it. Uh, number one, uh, Samir could buy a car. The buying of car uh, will require a handsome amount. Also, the it, it will be responsibility of Samir to manage the car. For example, changing the oil or replacing the tires or keeping it up to date, all that stuff. An alternative that Samir could choose is uh, he could rent a car. For example, uh, we have Samrat in the meeting. Samrat is a car owner and Samir could own a car or rent a car from Samrat. And for a particular requirement, uh, Samir could rent the his car. So there could be two possibilities, one of owning a car and one of renting a car. This similar way also goes in our token and cryptocurrency. You have to choose the best fit which fulfills your need. For example, you know you may not have a bunch of cash to buy a new car, or you have a super busy schedule that you could you could not manage a particular thing. Well, if you think of this analogy, it's pretty much the same. The difference between a coin and a token. A coin uses its own blockchain to keep the track of all the data, which is in our case a car analogy would be owning a car. And when it comes to a token, though you are using someone else coins blockchain as our infrastructure will be, and you will basically be paying a rent when you are creating a token. You do not have and you do not have to create a blockchain in case of a if in a case of token, and you have do not have to write a full code, and you do not have to worry about how it should be validated. Instead, you can create the token, and it runs on that particular blockchain. The best example for this would be Ethereum. 
Ethereum is it is having its own blockchain and it, it, it stores the value and validates the transactions. Ethereum team has been working very hard past few years on improving the entire system, updating how it works and patching vulnerabilities. And Ethereum token, which is the ERC20, it is working on Ethereum's blockchain and its, its backbone is the Ethereum transaction. Adding on the token team, once decide uh, to uh, to create because it's not growing larger so it decides to create a mainframe but they wanted to create a system that users could reward the creators uh, you must have heard about brave right the brave or the brave browser uh, you must have uh, used a brave browser what uh, it also follows the same analogy the brave uh, is responsible the brave browser is responsible to remove ads the advertisements from on the various uh, screens and in return they provide brave browser the company brave a, a token or a creation of a particular thing so that it could advantage it would get an advantage so this is what uh, the things goes though it sounds confusing but if you know uh, really that how it works uh, it would be pretty easy to understand uh, all the analogy anyways by creating a token uh, the brave team could rely on ethereum's network uh, to provide safety and stability uh, while they focus on their own products. Also, uh, you should know that a team of developers can migrate if the token is working very good, if the token is increasing, if the demand of token is increasing, if the data pays, if the user base is increasing, then the token, the developers of the token can migrate a token to a coin if they decide that their project is growing very quick enough. And if we uh, think uh, that about crypto.com, a uh, crypto.com uh, does in a similar way. It is also a website. A uh, crypto.com, they recently launched their own manet, uh, which is uh, a fancy way of saying that they launched their own coin, which is now validating their own transaction. Uh, see, initially they used to have a token, uh, the crypto.com. Uh, their token name was known as crypto. And now uh, the crypto.com has transferred into a blockchain. But it goes on so popular that they decide to create their own blockchain and branch it off. So in sum, you can understand the difference between token and coin as token is a subset of a coin. Getting back to the topic, I previously said that stable coin is a utility token built upon another's coin blockchain. Now you could understand how it, you know, the line mean. Uh, a utility token, stablecoin is a utility token that works upon another coin's blockchain. Now you are clearly uh, able to understand the difference between the both. The entire goal of a stablecoin is to create a cryptocurrency that isn't volatile. That is the main purpose of being a stablecoin in the use. Uh, that it does it, it is not volatile and it does it does also doesn't change its price. Uh, stablecoin offers the convenience of privacy and security of crypto while offering the stability and trust of a fiat money. That what I told uh, previously. Uh, theoretically, Bitcoin, the first cryptocurrency, was actually created uh, to be used as a store. All must have heard about Bitcoin. So initially, it was used as a store of value. However, uh, since it's not widely adopted and there can't uh, be very many, many regulations around it, so the price usually fluctuated. Mm -hmm. uh, it is classified as speculative investment because the prices uh, circulated and they also uh, do not have uh, things of what it is. I guess uh, we have a question in uh, chat. Uh, it would, uh, it's like, is it common name or a separate coin? Uh, Jagneesh, it's about, is it a common name or a separate coin? Uh, the crypto.com. The crypto.com is basically a website where uh, usually it used to release its token, all token. You can use crypto.com to produce its all uh, on token. But afterwards, uh, crypto.com uh, just changed its mainframe into a blockchain based a technology so this was what i tried to say the crypto.com apart from this before we go into deep uh, in the stable coin first we need a refresher on centralized exchange cex and decentralized exchange dex a centralized exchange in a, is an exchange that is owned by own entity like coinbase coinbase could be referred to as the centralized exchange, but they allow, allow the users to buy and sell cryptocurrencies as the Coinbase do. Since there are company that are technically regulated by the uh, government, so 
they, they have to answer to the particular authorization as it is being the centralized exchange. There would be a centralized body uh, which the particular thing will be answering to. On the other hand, decentralized exchange is an exchange that is not run by any particular company. Instead, they are run by code exchanges. Uh, a code exchange only happen when the code is changed and uh, due to their decentralized nature, a government cannot regulate and uh, even cannot shut them down uh, as they can do in Coinbase. So this is a plus point on decentralized exchange that there is a, no a centralized body and uh, it could not work on or if the government is not working well, it cannot uh, shut down decentralized exchange. But in comparison to centralized exchange, they could do so. Using stable coins, uh, you can trade back and forth from Ethereum to stable coin. Just, that just an example. You could trade back from Ethereum to stable coin. From stable coin, you could transfer it to the Bitcoin. From the Bitcoin, you can back to the stable coin. And whenever you want, you can use a decentralized exchange. Uh, this way, you don't have to pay any fees, uh, which does require in centralized exchange. And you don't have to wait for a long as you don't have to worry about the government tracking or canceling your transaction as if you would have to uh, if you used a centralized exchange. So this is what the decentralized exchange have pros over uh, centralized exchange. Here come some of the advantages of stablecoin. Uh, number one, the stablecoin allows for the convenience of cryptocurrency which means fast settlement and few regulatory hurdles uh, along with the stability of fiat currencies. Uh, number two, uh, like most of the coins, the most obvious use case would be to use them as a medium of exchange for day-to-day -day purchases. But since these coins aren't very popular at the moment, no one really accepts uh, that them as a payment method. So the main usage uh, here comes of stable coin is that today, Cryptocurrency exchanges are on hype. Uh, using stable coins, uh, traders can trade uh, volatile currencies from stable coins and uh, when they want at a lower risk. So they could use a stable coin as an exchange. Now, uh, this is actually a really a good advantage of stable coin. Uh, for example, uh, we have a participant in the meet, uh, Stuti. So, for example, uh, Stuti bought. Uh, a stable coin uh, of hundred dollars, as I told that USDT, the US dollar tether, uh, is equal to one US dollar. So uh, Stuti bought hundred USDT stable coin for hundred dollars, and for example, the prices of dollars high up to ten thousand uh, billion dollars. So now. You, you have 100 USDT in comparison to 10,000 billion dollars. So what Astuti does that uh, she sells 50 USDTs in comparison to at a rate of, of half of $10,000, which means $50,000, the $5,000. So 50 USDTs has been sold on $5,000. Now she's left with 50 USDT. Now, as soon as the price of dollars goes down, uh, she could utilize that rest of the 50 USDTs into a uh, into a USDT so that she could earn a really good profit. So this is how an exchange is possible. Uh, if I'm investing in a Bitcoin and I and I don't want to risk a Bitcoin falling against the US dollars, I can just exchange my Bitcoins for USDT and retain my dollar value. And once I want to get back into the game, I could hold the Bitcoins and I can exchange my USDT back to the BTC. Uh, if you really understand uh, what I am trying to say, that uh, you have buying a particular USDT for a particular coin, and then as the price lowers down, uh, you buy more BTCs, and then if you if the prices are high, then you can utilize those stable coins to convert it into uh, BTCs, and you can gain huge profits. So this method is extremely popular with crypto-only exchanges uh, that supply their users with the option to exchange bitcoins or fiat currencies uh, due to any regulations. Number three, we have no loss leading to only gains. That means stable coins are also beneficial when investing on platforms like AVE or Compound. There are compounds, there are uh, online stable coin wallets like AVE or Compounds, uh, where you can actually earn interest on your crypto assets. For example, if you have stored some crypto assets on AVE or Compound, you regularly get interest. And if you don't want uh, to worry about any flux price fluctuations because it's being stable into your wallets. Uh, for example, there is 20 APR and Ethereum 
uh, and um, there is a rise of 20 APR in the Ethereum, but it does not matter you. But if there is a fall of 20 Ethereum, then it could be very delicious as you will be getting a higher prices of the assets that has been stored in our wallets. So this is like no loss and this only leads to gains. Uh, another great advantage of stablecoin is that you can move on funds uh, between exchanges relatively quicker and uh, as crypto transactions are faster and cheaper than fiat transactions so it could intervene as the greatest advantage of stablecoin and the option for such a fast settlement between exchanges is making arbitrary more convenient closes and price gaps and that you could see between the bitcoin exchanges so any questions guys till now you have heard, you have understood what stablecoin is. You have understood what are the advantages of stablecoin. You also know about the differences between tokens and coins. Uh, there is a question why it is said that eCash, like RBI, is a solution for blockchain. See, as I told about decentralized and centralized system, the RBI cash is a centralized system. And the eCash is a decentralized system. Those who have not understood yet could get it. So being a centralized system, I already told about the various advantages of being a decentralized system. So blockchain is completely a decentralized system where you could hold on particular things and there is no involvement on any central block or central government. Uh, we have an, another question of eCash versus stablecoin. eCash again is a centralized way of transactions. Stablecoin is a way uh, that is connected with a decentralized uh, decentralized part. The government said that e-rupees use the blockchain. Is it right? See that what the analogy is. If the e-rupees is already using a blockchain, then which is better, a blockchain or e-rupee? Because the ultimate thing that e-rupees is using is a blockchain. So it's better if you use a blockchain in comparison to e-rupees. Yeah. Yes, Mink, you are right. If we are using anything, for example, uh, you can take an example. If you are already studying from a particular source and you are making notes from a particular thing. So reading notes or going to this particular video, which one will help you? Because notes are also made from that particular video. Okay, so moving ahead. Uh, we are now going into some technical stuff. So for now, stable coins are more of a utility coin for traders that an actual medium of exchanges, but how they are made possible? How do stable coins work? Uh, what keeps their price from the volatility that other cryptocurrencies experience? Well, mainly they work on two different ways. The first way is by creating trust that the coin is actually worth what it is pegged to, known as collateralization. And second is through algorithmic mechanism, also known as smart contract manipulation. Those were really uh, big, uh, big words, but I will going to break it down in further. First off, what fiat collateralization means? A fiat collateralization uh, means that each coin is backed by something in most cases that's one US dollar. Uh, in some though, it's other countries' currencies like the euros or even the gold tether. Uh, it is in fact one of the most major companies that release their USDT stable coins. For example, if the market doesn't believe that one USDT uh, is worth one dollar, I already told about the tether, the US dollar tether, yeah, and I also told that USDT is equals to one dollar. For suppose the comp the people start understanding that USDT is not really of, of worth it of one dollar, then people will immensely dump all their USDT and the price of this particular USDT will crash. In order to maintain this trust that yes, the one USDT is equals to $1, uh, the company backs its coin with some sort of assets. Asset is the liability that the company provides that we are uh, proving that our, that our stable coin is worth of $1 and we are providing some assets or collateral to the company in order to maintain the reputation of our stable coin. This is how the things goes. This is known as fiat collateralization. Fiat collateralization means that we are putting in some collateral to a particular uh, to a particular reputed currency or commodity, so that that particular currency will be backing up or will be pegging up our stable coin. This collateral is basically proof uh, that the company is 
is good for its words and that it coins uh, should actually be worth it of the particular thing or a particular commodity. For example, uh, the uh, Tether's case, each USDT is said uh, to be backed up by actual US dollars and that uh, Tether holds as a collateral. So a different example of collateral is like GDX. Uh, the, the, the DGX token uh, is said to be a backed by gold, uh, D, G, and X. And another version of collateralized stablecoin is, uh, for example, some stablecoin do that they back up with multiple cryptocurrencies. For example, not only are limited to a particular gold or a particular uh, US dollar, a particular stablecoin is backed up by many other commodities so that it would be more liable or more legal for the people to trust. So this is what the fiat collateralization goes. The best example for them is the USDT and the DGX. The pros of fiat collateralized stablecoin is uh, that fiat collateralized spec transmit the highest degree of certainty to stablecoin holders that the coin is indeed worth their set. It is backed up. Uh, fiat stablecoins are very stable as compared to other stablecoin as really money is backed them up. And these coins don't have to deal with legal issues as everything falls under legal terms. And developing these coins is fairly simple as uh, the architecture is not complex and the algorithm is uh, straightforward, nothing complex to use or nothing complex to utilize. Uh, we have a question, but taxes that are levied on blockchain is high, something like cash reserves ratio towards GOI. Yes, the taxes on blockchain is very high. That's where in stablecoin comes in. If you convert the stablecoin into block, if you convert a blockchain into blockchain uh, currencies, cryptocurrencies into stablecoin, that would be that would require very uh, very less uh, very less money. Uh, if you know about cryptocurrency, while exchanging for cryptocurrencies, you require a fuel, a fuel gas. But there is no concept of fuel gas in stablecoin. There is a limited amount of ta taxes that has to be translated when we transfers. Uh, the cryptocurrencies into stablecoin and then back from stablecoin into cryptocurrencies. So this is a minimal amount that is being done. I will be talking about it, the business model of stablecoin in further uh, in our uh, webinar today, and you will be understanding about how this works. This really works. So uh, now we next have the. Uh, let's move on with the second method, uh, which is an alternative of the fiat collateralization method. Uh, some stable coins are controlled by smart contracts. Uh, some people call this algorithmically pegged stable coins. And algorithmic pegs means that company writes a set of rules, also known as smart contracts. Uh, you must have understood what smart contracts is while mining of a Bitcoin, of a mining of a cryptocurrency. Uh, the an algorithmic pack means the company writes a set of rules known as smart contract and that increases or decreases the amount of a stable coin in circulation depending on the coin's price. Uh, we can I can explain it uh, with an example. Uh, imagine uh, we have a stable coin that is pegged up by US dollar uh, through an algorithmic pack, assuming a lot of people were to start buying the coin. Uh, people have heard about uh, this particular coin and they have started buying it. More people are buying this particular coin. So its price would rise and the peg would be broken because if the, there is more demand, you must have understood about, uh, you must have read about uh, this uh, theorem that we have in our economics uh, that uh, if you know that more demand, the demand is less, then uh, there would be more supply and there would be, a, if there is a less supply, then there would be more demand. So this rule also uh, follows here. Uh, to prevent this from happening, new coins are issued so that uh, people could uh, buy more coins. And if the, there is an increase in supply alternatives, the price price are created by the demand and maintains the coin's value. Uh, if on the other hand, uh, many people start selling the coin, if there is more coin or more currency in the market, then the coins are removed from the overall supply in order to hold the price, uh, which is being pegged to one US dollars. So it's just like if there is a more demand of stable coin in the market. So what the company does, it start increasing the production of stable coins. And if the people start selling these stable coins, uh, then there would be uh, more stable coins in the market. So the tokens are, or, um, are automatically using help smart contracts are removed. So this is how the working of uh, smart contract manipulation does uh, in the market. To be very clear, algorithmically packed stable coins don't hold any asset or collateral. And the smart contract that manages the coin act as a central bank. Uh, it tries to manipulate the price back to the peg by changing the money supply. Now, the benefits of a smart contract is it is very easy to audit 
and you just uh, take a look at the smart contract code and everything would be sorted out. And another benefit is that there is no physical asset to steal. Uh, however, there are some problems that seems to be in smart contract manipulation. It's like uh, smart contract control stable coins, which are usually much more volatile because if because the main purpose of stable coin was uh, to remove this uh, volatility and if the smart contract manipulation already has more volatile nature than what is particular use is uh, simply due to how they work uh, what they do is they must manipulate the supply of their coins to adjust the price if there is more coin, coins then they will uh, reduce this particular number of, number of coin and if there is a less coin then it, they would increase the production so they just manipulate the prices and the availability of the coins in the market uh, the algorithm of the smart contract there are three main algorithms which uh, the smart contract manipulation is done uh, one is uh, the changing of the amount of the coin uh, instead of manipulating or instead of uh, reducing the coins, they just change the amount of the coin. They, for example, if uh, one coin is bid for one rupees, then they would either change it to 0 0.75 rupees or it will increase to 1.125 1, uh, rupees. So it just manipulate the value of a single coin instead of deleting the coin. The second system uses a money printer where there is a bond reward system to adjust the price uh, to the dollar. And there is a third, which is very similar to the second, is uh, that they use something called coupons. Coupons helps in regulating the demand and supply rule. We won't be talking about these algorithms in detail because we have limited time and uh, we have to re be restricted on just the stable coins. Yes, so any questions till now? You must have understood about the concept, how the stable coin works. There are two main concepts, the smart contract manipulation and the fiat collateralized solution. So we have if if government reserves are exhausted, the peg will collapse. It's not only about the government reserves because uh, the because there are various factors that depends on collapsing of a peg. We will be discussing how a particular peg is collapsed. Uh, for now, I could answer this particular question is in a way that uh, if there is uh, the uh, the peg thing, for example, if the US dollar is if, if its price reduces then there would be a condition that the peg will also have to be of greater amount. The assets and the peg should be similar. If there is an asset of $1, then the peg would be of $1 as well. If the asset is of less than $1, then there would be a reduction of uh, stable coin. Then the stable coin comes in. How is it different from printing money? Printing money you get in hardware form, but stable coin works in a virtual form. You would you won't get coins in a physical way, or you won't uh, get coins like we have uh, silver coins in our uh, Indian rupees, the one rupee coin or two rupee coin. The whole crypt, the whole money is done in a printed form, in a printed way that you can use or exchange in a hardware form. But stable coin or cryptocurrency. The whole concept of Bitcoin is a virtual decentralized way. Yes, so that's all. Uh, moving further, how uh, do we really buy a stable coin? Because if we are learning something about stable coin, then we should also know that how we could buy a stable coin. In short, I could explain, I could not uh, explain it with the portal help or with the amount or with the online way because uh, uh, it's been restricted for now. But I could explain the process of buying a stable coin in a short way. Uh, the stable coins are brought and sold on exchanges, both centralized and decentralized way. Uh, it's very easy to buy Tether or AVE or USDT. All these are stable coins, Tether, AVE and USDT on a centralized exchange. Centralized exchange like, like Coinbase and uh, Gemini. Gemini and Coinbase are two ways of centralized use. We could buy uh, our stable coins on centralized platforms. Uh, another method is that uh, we could also buy something like Ethereum or on Coinbase. Uh, Ethereum is a sole blockchain coin. So we could use Ethereum on Coinbase and transfer it to our private wallet. And then we could use a decentralized exchange like Uniswap. Uniswap is a platform where you could swap the coins into tokens, the current cryptocurrencies into stable coins. Uh, like, uh, like I talked about uh, ETC, the Ethereum token of Ethereum coin. So ETC is also being uh, done. It's also being uniswapped from Ethereum, from Ethereum coin to a stable coin. Now we have the types of stable coin. 
uh, usually, uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, it could be the stable coins could be divided on two bases on price and value stability and on security, transparency, and speed. We have four types of stable coins the fiat bet stable coins, the non collateralized or algorithmic stable coins, the cryptocurrency backed stable coins, and fourth, the commodity collateralized stable coins. We will be discussing about four types in detail now. First comes the fiat bed, uh, based stable coin. So these are backed up by fiat currency. I already told about fiat currency, a legal currency which is being organized or be, be held by a vertical government like the Indian currency or uh, the US dollars. They typically have the same value as any regular paper-based money. The ratio of stable coin uh, fiat currency is equals to one is to one. As I told about Tether, the USDT and the US dollars. Uh, this type of stable coin is somewhat centralized as the fiat currency is controlled by centralized banks. The network will take fiat money and issue stable coins on the network. And when you want to sell your tokens, the network will transfer you the fiat money and will destroy the tokens on the network. If you want to put your tokens on the network, then you could hold those particular tokens. If you want them into converted into fiat money, then you can get that fiat money and your, the, your tokens, the short stable tokens will be destroyed. Uh, the examples of stable coin is uh, the Tether USDT and Gemini GUSD. Uh, the, you can see the logos of these stable coins. At the end of the session, you will be able to know and you could recognize that, that yes, this particular token of is of this particular logo is of this particular stable coin. You can uh, recognize uh, these logos because you could see these logos at various ways. If you are a blockchain enthusiast, then you must have heard about uh, these logos and uh, these names. So Tether USDT, the most popular stable coin, its logo is something like a like of a diamond and Gemini is something of like this. The advantages of fiat backed stable coins are they are very stable as compared to other stable coins as real money is backed, backed them up. And these coins don't have to deal with legal issues as everything falls under legal terms. And developing these coins is uh, fairly simple as the architecture is not complex and the algorithm is also straightforward. So nothing complex in it. The major drawbacks for fiat backed stablecoin is that the stablecoin follows a centralized system. As I told you about the pros of uh, decentralized system over the centralized system, thus it can be vulnerable to attacks. Uh, trust plays a huge part here as users have to trust the network blindly about the fiat backed tokens, which is engaged in nature of blockchain because blockchain doesn't uh, work on centralized system. And the third is uh, users have to adhere to regulations and rules as they are using the fiat money. Fiat money is controlled by a central government. So the rules of the central government has to be followed while exchanging of uh, these stable coins. And this is particularly absent in cryptocurrency. Next, we have the second type, commodity backed stable coin. As the name suggests, commodity backed stable coin, it means the stable coin will be backed up by any commodity. Commodities could be a valuable metal or gas, oil, gold, all these are valuable uh, to humans. These offer fungibility as you can trade them for fiat money. Users can find a more secure and better way to invest in commodities as they don't have to store commodities themselves because there is an issue of storing stable coins, the fat bed coins in a wallet. But there is no wallet for commodity backed stable coin. Uh, the stable coin is stored in a commodity. Uh, this could be anything like gas or gold. Once requested, the vendor will provide the commodity and the custodian will store it. Custodians are those who will store your commodity in return of those particular back coins. And based on that stable coin, it will get minted on the platform and the user will get the tokens representing that you have, yes, that you have this particular amount of commodity stored. The most popular example of commodity back stable coin is uh, DGX. As I told in the starting about DGX, DGX Gold, and there is Tiberius coin, uh, which is uh, Tiberius coin. Uh, I told you that uh, many coins also are backed up by various commodities. They are not restricted to one. So uh, Tiberius coin is an example that it has been backed up by seven types of metals. You can really thought of seven type of metals. And uh, these metals are platinum, uh, cobalt, gold, tin, nickel, aluminum, and copper. These are the seven metals which is being backed by Tiberius coin.
Next comes the advantages of commodity-backed stablecoin. Uh, users can redeem the assets anytime as these coins are backed up by real assets. Typically, the values of commodities are not volatile because it's hard to exchange the values or to regulate the values of the commodity. Thus, it can be of good source of investment for stable nature and tokenizing the commodities increases the liquidity of coins. Uh, you, I told you about the liquidity, right? Liquidity is how easily you could transfer or how easily you could uh, trade in a particular coin in the market. So it is also beneficial in, uh, as it increases the liquidity of the coins. There are some drawbacks of uh, commodity-backed stable coins. These tokens have to be used as commodities to back up the coins, which involves too many participants because participants would be the vendors that would be getting the commodities, the custodians that would be storing your commodities. So there are more people involved. The money is yours, the stable coin is yours, but many other people will be involved in this particular transaction. Third party influences on the coins as it make it in centralized in nature. Uh, and these coins have to go through regular audits to ensure trust to their users because trust have to be the most important part as many other people are also involved uh, using community backed coins. And it also take time and resource. So these were some of the drawbacks of commodity based coins. We have a question, sir, it is, uh, if it is has same value, then what is the purpose of using it? Like I have 5,000 cash and 5,000 Amazon vouchers. It does not have the equal value. If I convert 5,000 cash to voucher, I should get more value of Amazon voucher. Am I right? Yes. The, the thing is, for example, if I take this particular example, uh, which, uh, if I take this example, which uh, Tushar has uh, given us, uh, it's like, uh, for example, uh, we have 5,000 cash. 5,000 cash, you can take it as uh, 5,000 stable coins. We have 5,000 stable coins and we have 5,000 uh, the dollars. As I said, that $1 is equal to one USDT. So we have uh, $5,000 and we have 5,000 stable coins. Now, 5,000 stable coin is equals to $5,000. Now, we have bought, using dollars, we have bought uh, a blockchain, a blockchain, a cryptocurrency. For example, if we have bought Bitcoin from those $5,000, you know that Bitcoin prices always reaches highs or low. For suppose the current Bitcoin price is 14 lakh, as I said, uh, equivalent to Indian currency. If for suppose now the Bitcoin price is equal to 15 lakh, now you have one lakh profit. You though bought the uh, Bitcoin in 14 lakh, but now its price is 15 lakh. The variation of those 15 lakh, the one lakh is your profit. And if it goes down, then also it does not hamper in any way because your coin is being backed up by US dollars. You will still get those $5,000 instead of 5,000 stable coin. You do not have, and you do not have any loss, but you must have the uh, increment of those particular thing. Because the increment of one lakh is yours, but the decrement of any blockchain is any Bitcoin is not yours because you have been backed up by dollar. If you want to get back your uh, coins uh, or you have to back, back, get back your currencies, then you can do it by just converting your stable coin into dollar. Okay, great. Any more questions? Yeah, also we are in tier of the commodity as who is responsible to bear the loss. Usually the custodians and vendors who who is there to take care of your commodity bears the losses of all the all the things that's what happens for example if you have a uh, hundred uh hundreds hundred uh the amount of uh, your commodity is hundred so you have to give a particular amount to vendors and to the custodians also because they are the ones who are looking after your uh, commodities so the value that you are giving to uh, your custodians or the vendors uh, will make up the loss uh, they bear, they will they could bear the loss if uh, there is any in transferring or in storing uh, the uh, bitcoin or the commodity so uh, this is not an issue in the case of commodity currency, but uh, there it does that you have to give a particular amount to custodian and the vendors because they are the ones who are looking after your commodity. So moving on, now we have the third and fourth type of uh, stable coins. Now comes the cryptocurrency backed stable coin. 
uh, these are backed up by combination of cryptocurrencies such as bitcoin ethereum etc since the world recognizes its cryptocurrency so it must be involved with the cryptocurrencies which are there in the market it can also be backed up by a single cryptocurrencies or it could be backed up by multiple cryptocurrencies here when the price of a cryptocurrency drops other cryptocurrencies back it up and keep the value stable uh, for example, if your particular stable coin is backed up by Tether and Bitcoin, and if the Tether prices goes down, so the Bitcoin price will make up the losses of the Tether. So the so the value of your stable coin remains the same. Typically, these stable coins are overall collateralized to prevent any sudden crash. Uh, users uh, will have to lock their base cryptocurrencies, and the network will mint them stable coins based on that. So you have to choose your particular currency the main currency and then it would be uh, the backing up of all so there are a few examples of uh, cryptocurrency backed stable coins number one there is the maker dow dai which is popularly known as a dai uh, it is backed up by ethereum uh, and over collateralized and we have the second the synthetic having uh, which is being backed up by snx token so DAI and SNX are two examples of cryptocurrency backed coin. Here I have to mention about DAI. DAI is going very popular nowadays. Uh, it's being the top rated uh, stable coin. So you could, if you heard about DAI or if, if you could research about DAI in future, it would be great. Next comes the advantages of uh, cryptocurrency backed stable coin. Uh, the stablecoin uses a decentralized network to function properly, this being the most advantageous, meaning that no centralized interferes. Uh, it offers a high efficiency. It's easy to convert one type of cryptocurrency to another type. As you have the stablecoin, which is being backed up by Tether or you, is being backed up by Bitcoin, so you could easily convert Bitcoin into Tether or you could easily convert a Bitcoin into Ethereum. This is a great advantage as it is already backed up by cryptocurrency. As all transactions uh, get recorded on the public ledger system, it ensures transparency. Next are the major drawbacks. Uh, comparatively, they are more volatile than others. Uh, as the stable coin, as they are backed up by cryptocurrencies, cryptocurrencies are highly volatile. You already know. So since they are backed up by cryptocurrencies, they are high volatile in nature. Uh, minting new tokens is a complex process as it needs many factors to function properly. The third is liquefying these coins is easy. Thus, it can affect the price if the users start to panic selling these coins. Liquefying is an advantage, but if you are using liquefying into an another way, since it's very easy to convert a particular crypto coin into another but if you, if a user start uh, converting again and again so this would flood the market with different cryptocurrencies at a particular time so this could be disadvantageous also <clears throat> second comes the non collateralized stable coin as the word suggests, non-collateralized, it means there is no collateral of the stable coin. They do not have any type of asset backing them up. Uh, these usually have a complex algorithm uh, that burns or adds stable coin based on the market value. And these coins have a self-governing method that ensures that stable value of the coin. And when the demand rises, the network mints new coins. When it falls, the network burns some coins. Some examples of non collateralized stable coins are the ample fourth AMPL holders that owns a fixed fraction of AMPL rather than tokens. Second, we have MD set dollar. Uh, it has an elastic supply and uh, the tokens are minted when the value is above dollar one. So these two are the examples of non collateralized stable coin. The advantage of uh, non collateralized stable coin is that the stablecoin runs on a fully decentralized network, which being the most important point. So there are two third party influences and as it does not have any collateral backing it up. So users don't have to stress over the collateral price fluctuation as there is no collateral, no fluctuation of price would hamper this particular stable coin. The algorithm makes sure uh, that the stable value of the coin prevails at all times. The, Next comes the disadvantages. Uh, it's difficult for developers to recreate algorithms that can balance the value of the stable coin. The coin depends on the future demand of itself or successful because the uh, because we have to rely on the algorithm that uh, the stable coin, the, the cryptocurrency backed stable coin is working on. 
the process is new and complex thus most of the projects being unsuccessful that's a major drawback of this particular type of cryptocurrency it uh, does not offer security uh, that enterprise company needs in order to incorporate a digital currency as this country needs to be backed up and is new so this being the disadvantages of a uh, non collateralizable coin so finally done uh, we are done with the types uh, it must be boring i know but that has to go uh, likewise now comes something interesting uh, people also had questions around it what is the business model of a stable coin uh, with all the complexities in maintaining a stable coin spec you might be wondering that what's the incentive to create a stable coin in the first place what's the business model and what the owners or maintainers earn profit while establishing a stable coin because if there is a profit then only the companies will be releasing its stable coin then what is those uh, what what those benefits or incentives that the organization or the company has while st- establishing a stable coin a uh, reminder guys i am i am uh, telling you about the business model because uh, it might be possible that some of you who are attending this particular session could also provide its own stable coin in market in future so they could hear about this very seriously if they want to release their own stable coin in the market well for each company there is a different incentive uh, some companies can change a fee or can charge a fee uh, for trading their coin Uh, the fees is really very less as compared to the transactions or fuel gas that is being provided in the blockchain other companies use their stable coin as a marketing channel to raise awareness to the company and the other services it offers like hobby gemini coinbase and circle are exchanges uh, that have created their own stable coin these are the companies that created their own stable coin just to attract more users to their trading platforms and allow easier transaction of funds within their exchanges so this is what the business model of stable coin is uh there we have a question sir i have a one running algorithm stable coin successfully then i can replicate it 1000 time with changing name of the coin see then there is no worth it of uh, replicating a stable coin should have a value if you are using a same algorithm for one particular stable coin then using that same algorithm for another stable coin it won't be successful for example the algorithm that you are using goes down so the stable coin which is being there which is being made on particular algorithm also goes down so how it could help raise raising your issues if you use different uh, algorithms you can test it on different stable coins and you can find out that which algorithm being the best and using the best will help you getting the best stable coin and its value here we have the uh, most popular stable coins first we have the usdt or the usd tether i have already mentioned about it uh, it is a fiat collateralized stable coin that is backed up by us dollars the coin was created by the company tether and was remained relatively stable coin in the introduction of 2015 we have next the pexo pexos uh, which is a stable coin launched by itbit to maintain pexo standard next we have tusd not to be confused with the usdt uh, the it stands for true usd and it, it is a relatively new fiat collateralized stable coin that attempts to addresses the criticism directed by tether and collateral us dollars are held in bank accounts of multiple trust companies so it is how it resolves the problem of usdt and these bank accounts are published every day and are subject to monthly audits next we have the gusd uh gemini uh usd it is a fiat collateralized stable coin issued by the popular crypto exchange gemini which was established by the uh, winklevoss brothers and according to gemini gusd is the f- first regulated stable coin in the world next we have the usdc which stands for usd coin it is a fiat collateralized stable coin issued by circle and coinbase you could also go for dai as i told uh, previously Uh, now we could have a quick look on the real applications of a uh, stable coin uh, we have it act as an everyday currency the second it's a p2p payment and streaming uh, the third we have affordable and fast remittances the fourth we have the security from currency crashes and the fifth we have stabilized cryptocurrency exchange again they are they are uh, detailed projects and it, it has to be discussed in detail and we do not have much for it next we have the limitations Uh, of stable coin it is being centralized 
bigger question that there is a issue of governance that is why it is being centralized second we have the trust issues the stable coins are trying to get the best of both the worlds the stability of an established country currencies uh, with the large market and the flexibility of decentralized but with the great uh, stability they also have, are going to the worst of both the worlds a centralized coin with a sort of central bank controlling and it is also questionable about the ability to sustain in future next comes the unsustainable nature and the fourth one is the regulation uh that finally here is a question of about the regulation will regulators allow companies to create an asset that mimics legal tender without any oversight one example we could see of uh, like basis basis was a stable coin uh, it was algorithmically pegged uh, and it was not so long ago and it seems like stable coins are some sort of temporary utilities and not the permanent solution of what we want so the basis was a stable coin which was pegged earlier but it was stolen out or it was crashed out uh, just because of the regulations that the company imposes on basis next there are lots of criticism going around about the creation of stable coin the most common one is related to the inability of actually maintaining the peg into the long run uh, this could be due to the any one of the reason i've mentioned before Uh, it could be either that a commodity is not likely being imposed, or it uh, the company's owns or disowns the peg, or if the peg is not equal to the assets that the company is providing. On the top, uh, there's a quick look at history tellers that all the pegged currencies are doomed to fail uh, due to the cost of maintaining them, especially when the peg comes under attack, and the attack could be of any reason. Some well-known examples where pegs were broken are the Swiss franc peg to the euro in 2015, the Chinese yuan to the U.S. dollar in 2005, the Thai baht peg in the U.S. dollar in 1997, and the most famous of them all, the gold standard pegging the U.S. dollar to gold in 1971. Now it's time to be a little more pessimistic around the topic of stable coins. While stable coins Uh, while stable coins do have good trades around them there are few things that you should think about before fully ditching your savings account and tossing all your savings into a stable coin first is uh, uh, yes uh, we are going to end here uh, first is the lack of insurance uh, when we put out our money into a bank saving or checking account it is actually insured by the government and at least in india if uh, the, all the banks in india have been issued with fdfdaci if we lost some money from the bank then we then the bank will repay us uh, around 2 uh, and a half lakh rupees for the worth that we lost so uh, this is the thing that is not there in stable coins Uh, stable coins do not have the advantage yet if a company that started and is operating at stable coin goes bankrupt then you will most likely lose all your investment and left empty handed and secondly we have to bring back the collateralization issue that uh, i told about if the people lost trust that yes one usd is equal to one us dollar so that could also be an uh, problem problematic for stable coin if we are putting our money into them i would recommend that uh, you should be cautious and you should always do your own research work so that was all for today's data r uh, hope you must have enjoyed this session and have learned something also i guess i haven't bored you enough and you could connect me and you could ask me for your doubts or anything that you want for a for being a bitco coin miners or you have to learn more about anything you could uh, dm me you can uh, you can uh, come in touch on linkedin and nice to have you all here thank you so much